Uh, now, the Lionesses have a date with destiny on Sunday after beating out old rivals Australia, where they'll take on Spain in the Women's World Cup final. Well, fans have been celebrating up and down the country and also down under as well as the girls made history. Beautifully sung there. <laughs> uh, joining Let's us now <laughs> is former Lioness Siobhan Chamberlain. 50 international caps, Siobhan. You're now currently part of the ITV commentary team. Lots have been said about the team, the English England women's team, about their skill level, how good they are. But you, you've got to really praise their mentality. They just seem to be so strong mentally. There have been times in this tournament where they've had some setbacks, but they it doesn't look like they have. They've just pulled themselves together and, and really worked as a team. They have done. I think, obviously, they won the European Championships last summer and everything kind of went smoothly. Everything was perfect. They could play the same starting lineup for every single match. Yeah. And it was just the perfect story. You had your home crowd supporting you. It was absolutely brilliant. This has been a slightly different story. They've had injuries going into the tournament, losing their captain. It, it was huge, losing other players and then getting injuries during the tournament, sendings off. There's so much that's happened to this team and they've still managed to get yeah. through to this final. Because, you know, some of, some of us have watched those England tournaments, you know, the men's tournaments, where, you know, Beckham's been sent off or players have been injured, but never quite recovered from that. It's been all over the papers and it's really affected the team. It just seems to me that Serena and everybody have just sort of kept themselves focused on the job in hand. Most definitely, and I think the key word there is Serena. Yeah. She is outstanding. She's uh, had so many plaudits recently and all fully deserved. I think for me, she is the difference maker. She's the one that's taken this team from an excellent group of players to a group of players that now believe and have the ability and the tool set in game and out of game to make changes, to, to get them over that kind of little barrier that stopped them from getting to finals before, stopped them from winning finals. And for me, she, she's so important to this team. So you think she's the sort of the key ingredient that's given them the edge? Because, you know, how much does it rely on bringing the team together? How much does it all come down to that kind of leadership and making sure that they've got the right mentality when they walk out on the pitch? Yeah, it's huge. You can have brilliant players, but if you haven't got someone that puts them together the right way, that can watch the game as it's happening and say, look, these are the tweaks we need to make, not wait until five minutes before the end to say, now we've got to throw someone on to make a change. Mm. She's brave. She'll make changes when she needs to and she knows her key players that can do that. And she's aware of the, 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 the things that are going well and the things that aren't and how to adapt them. And that's really, really mm. tricky to be able to do in the emotion of the moment, in the high, tense situations that you're in in a yeah. World Cup semi-final as it was yesterday. Yeah, there's immense pressure, isn't there? There's immense pressure on any sports team, really, in any game. But... There's something really special here. I think, you know, when you when you see, you know, eight-year-old girls chanting, you know, England's coming home, and, and you go, oh my God, this is amazing. This is inspiring lots of people, but particularly young girls out there. Did you feel that when you played? Did you feel that sort of extra responsibility, that sort of extra buzz around the fact of what, what you represented as an England women's football team? Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I started playing... I didn't even know there was an England women's team. I didn't have any role models. There was no football, women's football on television that I could turn on and watch. There was no kind of awareness to that. Mm. So now I think visibility is key. If you can see it, then you know that you can be it. So now these little girls growing up have got these girls on posters on their walls. It's not David Beckham. It's Alessia Russo, it's Ella yeah. Toon, and that gives you the ability to dream and say, this is what I want to be. It's, an a, real, it's a realistic dream yeah. instead of just kind of something that it's amazing, you isn't don't it? know about. And I know, because my eight-year-old daughter now plays football, and I know your daughter is a big fan of the Lionesses. You put out some pictures of her, didn't you? I did. She's absolutely obsessed with Alessia Russo. Oh, she goes, look at I her. think she's nailed her she's celebration. She's nailed the celebration. Well. Hand is up in the air. <laughs> she loves it, bless that her. Is and it's, it's, adorable. It's, it's so cute to see. Um, when you started playing, was there opposition? Were there people sort of going, what are you thinking here, Siobhan, playing football? With, you know, friends, family, were you, did you get the support you needed back there? Friends and family always supported. I think you always get the odd kind of trolls on social media that think they're oh, being God, funny. Yeah. and like, of course, yeah. But you get that in any walk of life and it's about putting that to the side. It's focusing on what you want to focus on. I, I never really had those opportunities that the girls get now because there weren't so many girls' teams, there weren't leagues running. Mm. Um, it wasn't considered a normal thing to do. Whereas now you go out to the park, you see dads out there playing with their little girls yeah. in full football kit instead of just playing with yeah. their little boys. Listen, thank it's God amazing. you did, because if you hadn't, we wouldn't be here. In the position we're in. So well, well listen, we're gearing up to the final. Lionesses against Spain on Sunday morning. How do you think it's going to go? What's your prediction? 
I'm hoping it's not as nerve-wracking as some of the games. <laughs> Yesterday was a little bit more relaxing, managed to get that third goal. But I think England have got the ability to go out there and do it. I think Spain technically are a better side than England. Don't they're, say that. Oh. Technically, yeah. that doesn't mean they're going to win. Yeah. I think England have got the nous to, to get the victory, but it's about being comfortable being off the ball because yeah. Spain... Tiki tacky football, they're absolutely brilliant. But if you can be comfortable letting them have the ball, taking your moments and going out there and using the goal scorers that they've got to, to win the game, then there's no reason why England can't go out there and win. A prediction? <sighs> go on, stick your neck out. Penalties. England winning <gasps> on penalties. Oh, don't oh, say that. Oh, oh, can you what, make imagine? it exciting for everyone? <laughs> no. Oh, not sure I could take that on a Sunday morning, <laughs> uh, but I think you might be right. Uh, Siobhan Chamberlain, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks thank for all you've done me. for England women's football. Thank Incredible you. stuff. Yeah, let's hope they're bringing it home. That's what we all want, isn't it?